Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at finding a fraction of a quantity. So for example, we're going to be looking at finding things like half of 50. Now obviously half of 50 is quite easy. You're going to say it's 25. But in mathematical terms, how do we write that out? Because obviously if we can do things for the easy, easy questions, we can apply it to the more challenging ones. Now in mathematics, often we say of means times. So I'm actually doing this. What I'm actually doing is a half times 50. Now the last lesson we looked at, we actually looked at multiplying our fractions. So if I'm looking at multiplying this fraction, I'm simply going to put this over 1. 1 times 50 is 50. 2 times 1 is 2. And 50 divided by 2 is equal to 25. Now you may also do it a slightly different way and actually simplify these numbers at this stage. For example, see how I've got 2 on the bottom and I've got 50 on the top. Now they're both even numbers. So I could actually say that 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 50 25 times. Therefore 1 times 25 is 25. 1 times 1 is 1 and 25 over 1 is just 25. Now you might think why would you do that? If you have larger numbers sometimes it can be easier to simplify at this point. Now that was a really easy question so let's have a look at a more challenging one. Let's find 3 quarters of 20. Can you do that one? Let's see. Now what I'm going to do is once again I'm going to rewrite it and put 3 quarters of means times and I've got 20 over 1. Now likewise if you wish to do 3 times 20 that's 60 4 times 1 is 4 and then what's 60 divided by 4? Well hopefully you might already know that that's going to be 15 but that's a more challenging number otherwise you could do short division how many 4's go into 6? 1 with 2 left over how many 4's go into 20? 5 or we can even use this method here and say, well, 4 in 20, huh, 4 in 20, um, 4 in 20, well, 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 20 five times, therefore 3 times 5 is 15, 1 times 1 is 1. See how sometimes simplifying when you're using pen and paper is a lot easier. Okay, let's have another question. Um, we'll call it number 3. We're going to do um, 1 fifth of let's say um, 75 and then after you do that I want you to find two um, let's say sevenths of let's say 140. Okay can you do those two questions for me? Okay so that first step hopefully you've done this one fifth of means times 75 over 1. Now, again, if you want to just do times the tops and times the bottoms, that would come out to be 75 over 5. 5 goes into 7 once with 2 left over. 5 goes into 25 5 times. So my answer is 15. However, you may have simplified early, like I showed you in those last couple of questions, and say that 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 75 15 times. Therefore, 1 times 15 is 15. 1 times 1 is 1, so my answer is just 15 there. So again, you can do either way. Okay, what about this question here? How'd you go with this one? So 2 sevenths times 140 over 1. Now, I could again do 2 times 140 is 280 and then divide the whole thing by 7. Or what you might like to do is say, well, 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into, well, goes into 14 twice, and I've got another 0 on the end of that. 2 times 20 is 40. 1 times 1 is 1. So it's just 40. And most times, if you recognize it's 1 times 1 is 1, you don't even need to write the over 1. You can just write 40. But either way, that would have been the same answer. Okay, so let's have a look at a more challenging question. We're going to do 2 and 5 eighths of, let's say, 40. Now that's going to be a pretty tough question. So you could use a calculator, okay? Um, but however, we're going to do this with pen and paper. So like when we have seen those other questions when we've added, subtracted, even multiplied and divided, we've often put this as an improper fraction because 
That's how we've learned to do all these calculations. So what is that as an improper fraction? Well, 2 times 8 is 16, plus 5 is 21. So we have 21 over 8. Now, of means times, and we have 40 over 1. So you can see how I've rewritten that question. Now, I can do a couple of things here. Well, one thing, in fact, I mean, I could do 21 times 40. That's going to be a pretty big number. Okay, but I might recognize that, hey, 8 goes into 40 exactly. 8 goes into 8 once, 8 goes into 40 five times. So now I can do 21 times 5. Well, 20 times 5 is 100. If 1 times 5 is 5, so we've just got 105. And it's 1 times 1 is 1. I'm not going to bother putting the 1 there. My answer is 105. See, a really tough question, but putting it as an improper fraction first, and then... Um, simplifying before we go ahead is the best way to do it. Okay, now just before I move on, I just want to show you one last thing. Now again, I'm going to have to apologize because my um, calculator, my emulator, is unfortunately not working. So I'm just going to have to use a graphics at the moment, and I'll have to redo this lesson when I get it working again. Um, I just wanted to show you how to do some of these fractions on the calculator. Okay, so this is using the calculator. Um, so we will look at the question, first of all, we'll look at um, 3 sevenths of um, 61, 615, we'll do that one number, okay? So first of all, do you know where your fraction button is on your calculator? Well, if you have a look down on that second key, probably the wrong colour there to use, Okay, I'm going to use a better color, maybe red. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that button there looks, looks like this, sort of looks like that. That is your normal fraction button or an improper fraction or whatever you want, one you want to use. So, for example, if we're looking at this question, I can press that button first. And once I press that, oops, when I press that, we can then enter in the numbers three and then seven. You can even press the three first and then press your fraction button and it'll put it straight into the fraction. Now of means times and then we've got 615. So we're simply just pushing our fraction button, putting in three over seven and then saying times 615 and then pressing equals. Now your answer might come up as one of these two numbers, well three numbers in fact. It could come up as one, eight, four five over seven now currently that is an improper fraction if you want to put that as a mixed numeral okay what you can then do is see this shift key and this SD key okay above it you might just be able to see that it actually has mixed num mixed numerals in yellow so if you press your shift and then press the SD key, it actually rewrites it for you as 263 and 4 sevenths. Much easier than having to do it the long way with, with by hand. Alternatively, you might have your calculator come up as the answer 263.5714286. Now that's quite unlikely that it will come up directly as a decimal. But again, if it does that, okay, all you need to press is that SD key yet again. But not the shift SD, okay, just SD, and it will put it straight into an improper fraction. But of course, if you wanted a mixed numeral, then you could press the shift in front of it. Now that SD key, that is basically your fraction to decimal key, okay, or vice versa. So if you've got a decimal and it can be written as a fraction, just press SD and it will do that for you. But remember, if you want the mixed numeral, you must press shift before you press the SD key in order to make that work. Now, that's the first type of example. What happens, though, if you have a slightly different question where this is not as a a fraction but it's as a mixed numeral to start with so let's look at an example of that let's look for example of three and four fifths of six thousand okay now a lot of people make a mistake here by 
writing in three and then doing their fraction button. Unfortunately, what that's going to do is it's not going to do three and four fifths, it's going to do three times four fifths. And we don't want that to happen because it will be an actual incorrect answer. So if you look at your fraction button, it's a bit hard to see in mine at the moment, but if you look at your fraction button, above it in yellow, you'll actually see this box which is actually your mixed numeral box. So if you press shift and then your fraction button, okay, it will put that button there. You can type in three, four fifths of means times and 6,000. And then depending on how you would like your answer to be written, if you want it as a um, improper fraction, you can just leave it as is. And most likely your calculator will do that to start off with. If you want it as a mixed numeral, okay, you can press Shift SD. But in this case, the answer comes up to be 22,800. So there's no need to put it into fraction key. In fact, if you press it, nothing will actually happen. So that's another way to enter in your fractions and to find a fraction of a particular quantity. Remember, if it's $6,000, that's the question. Make sure you answer your, your, have your answer in dollars as well. Okay, I hope this was useful guys. Again, I'll update this once I get my emulator working again and you can see it a little bit more clearly. Thanks guys, have a great day.